Welcome to Next Games, The Journey of CyberLogic, Episode 28, Abyssia Throngy. Now in this video, we will be heading into our second zone in the Abyssia series and taking on the zone quest boss, Glavoid. Now the spawn item for Glavoid requires us to kill six NMs, which is what we will be covering in this video. Now in our next video, we'll be covering the other nine NMs that we need to take on the final end boss of this zone, Lakobi. Now the first NM on our road to that final boss starts here with the NM that you see me taking on now, Min Hoko. Now he can be found at the northernmost part of the map here. Now since we enter way down here and this is our first time into this zone, we will be having to run all the way up there as opposed to take confluxes. But it will give us the opportunity to unlock seven of the eight confluxes in the zone when we make this run. Now this path that you see me mapping here will allow you to get to fluxes 1, 2, 7, 4, 6, 5, and then 8, which only leaves the single conflux of 3 here for us to get on our next run when we're dealing with those additional NMs. Now after hitting all of those fluxes, we head to this area here, which is where we will find Minho Ko roaming around. Now after this boss is killed, it can take up to 30 minutes for him to respawn, so you want to be sure to get that key item on that first kill, or you'll have to wait up to that amount of time to see him again. This means you will want to try and get our red stagger in, if at all possible, to assure that we acquire this key item. Now, I was fortunately able to get that red stagger in on Mino early, so that I could then just focus on my damage for the rest of the fight. Red, blue, and yellow staggers are all gone over, in episode 26 of the series. Now Mino has some nasty abilities that you will need to be ready for, including desiccation, which will strip you of all your armor and reset your job timers. Extreme purgation, which absorbs all buffs, and then the combination of gorge and disgorge is really what you want to pay special attention to in this run. What gorge is going to do is absorb a good amount of hit points from everyone within range, which usually includes most of your trust. And then we'll use Disgorge, which will do conal damage based on how much damage Gorge absorbed. This ability can easily one-shot you if ignored, so you can deal with it a few ways. The first is as you see me doing here in this video, where after I see the use of Gorge, I immediately get ready to run out of range as I know the next ability used will almost always be Disgorge. Another way is to tank the Sandworm on his tail, but if your positioning isn't just perfect, you can spin the worm around and it may end up one-shotting your entire group. So therefore, I like to use this method especially when I'm using Trust. Another thing that's useful in this one is Trust Selection, as Trust like Uligor can stun the Disgorge ability, making it so that even if you don't get out of range in time, you'll be safe. I'm also using the Trust of Lion for Treasure Hunter, Seththus to restore HP, TP, and MP to the party, Kurimoru for Haste, and Yoran Oran for Cures. Now even though Treasure Hunter doesn't help with getting the key items to drop, it does help with getting the pop items to drop off of the lesser enemies that we need to spawn many of the NMs that we're going to kill in this video, so I still find her useful when farming those pop item sets. Once you have acquired the Sodan Sandworm Husk key item, we can move on to our next boss. This brings us to our next NM in the series, Adzi. Now, Adzi can be found here in this section of the map, just west of our previous enemy. Now, Adzi spawns every 10 to 15 minutes, so being sure to get that red stagger on this one isn't quite as important as it was on Minahoko. But you still should give it a try to see if you can get it in and save yourself some time. Now, you want to be sure to balance that with the risk that fighting Adzi long term is going to pose to you as the longer this fight goes on, the more risky it's going to be, as Adzi has access to a number of abilities that can pose a challenge to you and your group if they start landing. Let's go over them as we watch me take this one on. First, even Adzi's regular attacks will enfeeble you with a variety of negative status ailments, including Doom, Petrify, Plague, Silence, and Slow. So you must keep those shadows up at all times to avoid being inflicted with any of these negative status ailments. Now this can be difficult as Adzi poses a high rate of triple attack and those attacks hit for a good amount of damage so watch out. Many AoE abilities will also strip your shadows so always be ready to get them right back up. 
Now, Emetic Discharge can also be used, which will transfer all of the Enfeebles on Adzi to everyone in range as well as strip your shadows. So be sure not to put up any Enfeebles on her that you wouldn't want on yourself. Now, there are several other abilities used as well that will do everything, including Inflict Plague to Amnesia that your trust won't even be able to get off of you. So for all of these reasons, try to get that red stagger in, but don't feed Adzi too much unnecessary TP and don't take too long. If things start to go south, just finish her off as quickly as possible in the interest of safety. Once we get the sticky gnat wing key item from one of our kills, we are ready to move on to our third NM, Abbas. To spawn Abbas, we need to first get his pop item called the Eft Egg to drop off of the Canyon Fs in this area here. Using a trust such as Lion with Treasure Hunter can help to make it drop faster. Now once it drops, we can spawn Abyss by trading it to the question marks in this same area. Now Abyss can use several water-based spells including Water Gut 3, Poison Gut 2, Water 4, and an AoE version of Flood. Now Abyss will use normal F attacks, but none of them should really pose much of a risk to you. Now when Abyss dies, you should receive the Quivering F Egg Pop Item. You now want to head to this area here, to the north, near Flux number 4, to kill Cluckatrices until you get the Cockatrice Tailmeat pop item to drop. Again, using a trust with Treasure Hunter will help you to get this drop. Now once in hand, trade both the Cockatrice Tailmeat and the Quivering Eft Egg to the question marks here at this location to spawn Electrion. Now Electrion is a Cockatrice type mob that has a few things you will want to look out for. First, melee attacks will poison you with a potent 150 hit point per tick poison. Now as long as you have a reliable healing trust out like Yoran Oran, they should be able to quickly get this off of you and make it a non-issue. In addition, once Baleful Gaze goes off, the enemy's attack will be boosted by a substantial amount for a period of time, so you want to be sure to have a healing trust out again like Yoran Oran, who will get that petrification off of you as quickly as possible so that you can get your shadows back up if necessary to avoid these highly damaging attacks. Now Electrion also has access to Contamination, which will remove all of the Enfeebles currently on Electrion and transfers them to anyone in range. Now you want to be sure to keep your shadows up and you'll be able to avoid any of these Enfeebles hitting you, but your trust will still be hit by them, so be sure not to put any Enfeebles on the NM that you don't want to be inflicted upon your trust. Now this fight normally isn't as long as you're seeing it take in this video, but I was trying to get the red stagger to ensure the key item dropped, but after going through all of my available weapon skill options, it was unable to be triggered. Fortunately, the key item dropped anyway, giving us our third of four key items needed to spawn Glavoid. Now the final key item is received from the boss Muscalid, who is spawned up here in the north. But before we can spawn him, we need to get both of the pop items needed to do so. The first can be gotten in this area here, just north of our previous NM. We need to kill Jaguar Andes in this area until we get the Shocking Whisker to drop from them. Treasure Hunter once again will help out with this. Now once it drops, trade it to the question marks nearby here to spawn the NM Tefnet. Now Tefnet is a Corel type enemy that you will want to kill as quickly as you can. This is because he has access to two nasty abilities that can quickly end your run. The first is Blink of Peril, which will lower your hit points to a critical level, and if your shadows happen to be down, he can end up finishing you off with a single round of attacks. The second ability is Mortal Blast, which instantly kills you. Now both of these abilities can be avoided if you simply turn around when the ability is going off. However, you can often be locked into animations such as during weapon skills that will prevent you from turning around at certain times. So that's why you normally just want to finish this one off as quickly as you can and be ready to turn if you see either of those two abilities being ready. You also do not need to worry about getting the red stagger in on this one as you're only after the smooth whisker pop item that he will drop upon death. Now with whisker in hand, we now turn our attention to the second pop item. We can get this by simply killing manticores to the east in this area here. We're trying to get a resilient main pop item to drop. Once it does, we need to head to this location here to spawn Muscalite by trading the resilient main and the smooth whisker pop items to the question marks here. Fighting Muscalite can be a bit of a challenge as he likes to spam the heat breath ability. Unlike other manticores, 
he will instead turn into a random direction before using it and then hit everyone in that cone of range with it. This means your trust are going to often get hit with it. Try to spread out as a group around him so that the heat breath only hits a few members of your group and not everyone at once. Now the heat breath can hit for a substantial amount of damage and have the ability to wipe your trust in a single hit, so be careful. In addition, as the enemy's health drops, the frequency at which they are used and how many times they are used per ability phase goes up. This will make it near impossible to trigger a red stagger under the 50% health mark, so try to get it in as quickly as you can at the start of the run. In the example you're seeing here, I took too long attempting the red stagger, and it led to all of my trust being wiped out by a heat breath under that 50% health mark. I fortunately still was able to get the key item to drop upon his death, giving us our fourth and final key item for the Glavoid. Now the Glavoid fight is a painful one and can take a very long time, so you want to be sure to have plenty of time left on your timer before spawning him. Now once spawned, I like to bring him over to this location here to fight so that I can avoid any adds during this lengthy run. Now this is the most timing specific NM we've encountered in our journey yet, so you'll need to pay close attention to what's going on at all times. Let's go over all the things that we will see when taking this one on. First is the frequent use of Blood Weapon. He will start using it at 75% health, and he can use it an unlimited amount of times beneath that. In addition to that, under 50% health, the use of Blood Weapon has the chance to reset hate, and under 25% health, Blood Weapon will always trigger the loss of hate. In addition to that, every time Blood Weapon is used, he will gain an immunity to either physical or spell damage for 30 seconds, slowing down your run. In addition, during the readying of any TP ability, he will absorb all physical damage and gain a powerful stone skin effect that is based upon how much damage he's absorbed since the last use of a TP ability. Glavoid will also use earth-based spells including Sloga, Stonega, and Quake 2. He will also absorb all magic damage while he is casting these spells and again gain a stone skin effect once that spell's done being casted based upon how much he's been healed since his last casting. Next, let's go over the next abilities that you're going to be seeing. Extreme Purgation is the first we will go over. It is a very large area of effect and will drain large amounts of hit points from anyone in range. It can also absorb status effects, buffing Glavoid over time. Now this ability will also of course greatly boost the stone skin effect the next time that Glavoid uses a spell or ability, so keep it in mind. Next is Desiccation. Now it's going to reset all job abilities to their maximum recast timers, so therefore it's definitely going to slow down your room again because you're not going to be able to use any of your powerful abilities shortly after this ability goes off, especially things like your SP ability. Alien Void is a conal ability that you'll see used, and it does wind damage and inflicts silence and blind. Now Dust Void is the earth version of this ability, and it's going to remove your equipment and cause knockback. Now Slaverous Gale is a conal ability that will inflict both plague and slow. Now the last two abilities are the two that you need to watch out for the most. The first of these is Gorge, which is a conal area of effect HP drain ability. Now this is divided among all the people in front of Glavoid that it hits, so you would think that you want to have all of your trust in front to divide that damage, but that will mean that they get hit with all of these nasty conal attacks, and it also is going to make for a much more challenging run. Now I find that at this level you can deal with the damage from this ability yourself, but that it can be devastating to your trust and strengthen his other abilities, so I choose to tank in the front with my trust to his sides or behind. Now, Disgorge is the last ability and the most dangerous one we have to go over. It's a conal earth-based ability, and it will do damage based upon how much hit points was absorbed during the last gorge. Again, I find that it's best to deal with this by just tanking yourself in front of him, therefore limiting the amount of hit points drained, and therefore the amount of damage this ability will do to the people in front of him when it goes off. Now, I recommend you turn before each weapon skill to make sure you don't cure him with a round of attacks while you're stuck in that weapon skill animation. And due to all of these absorbing health and stone skin abilities, you need to keep in mind that you're going to be in for a very long fight, but just keep with it and focus on not curing him and getting in your damage as efficiently as you can, and you should be able to get through this one. Now, if at all possible, I recommend trying to get a red stagger in at the start of the fight to ensure that you get the key item upon defeating him. 
otherwise you will need to kill all the NMs in this video over again for another chance at it. Now I fortunately was able to get the key item to drop on our win, setting us up for a fight against the boss of the entire zone, Lakovi, in our next episode. That's going to be all I have to cover in this one. Please enjoy the rest of the fight against Glavoid, and we'll see you next time as we continue the journey of Cyberlogic.